What's going on guys? Thanks for joining me today on the Blitz Report. Before we jump into today's topic, which is did the Tennessee Titans get a wake-up call in Arizona, I want to make a few announcements. We are at 136 subscribers right now, and I want to see if we can get that number up to 200 before 2018, the new year. So if you're new here, punch a subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, hit the like button. That helps us get more people because it moves the videos up uh, higher on the search list. So Let's go ahead and see if we can get up to 200. I do take video requests. If there's an NFL topic you'd like me to talk about, it's not all Tennessee Titans here. Um, that's my team, so I do put out a video for uh, specifically for them from time to time. If there's anything NFL-related that you want me to talk about, drop it in the comment section below. I'll get you featured and shout out on a video in the future. Uh, we're doing mock drafts right now. I'm putting out scouting reports. Those videos are coming out because we're getting closer to draft time. We'll be talking about playoffs per here pretty soon, so um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet, and if you have, hit the like button. So let's go ahead and jump in to today's topic is, did the Tennessee Titans get a wake-up call in uh, Arizona? And you really, really, really have to hope so. Last time I did a Tennessee Titans video specifically for the Titans was a few weeks ago when they played the Indianapolis Colts. I got a lot of hateful comments on that one, which is fine. I don't mind it. I, I appreciate any and all feedback that you guys want to give, whether you agree or disagree. Whatever is fine. This channel is not all about me. I want it to be a community channel, so feel free to leave your thoughts, good or bad, in the comment section below. But the Tennessee Titans this year, their wins have been coming closely, grinding them out over bad teams. And finally, when they played the Arizona Cardinals, it didn't work out, and they ended up losing that game. So you got to hope that they got a wake-up call. Really, me and every other Tennessee Titans fans was hoping the Titans would take a, another step forward this year, but it's more of they took a step back. Yeah, we won more games in a shorter span of time than what we did from the previous year, but we've been playing much, much worse. Our run game isn't working. Marcus Mariota has been turning the ball over horribly. Um, I think he's tied for sec the second most interceptions in the league, or at least he was a few weeks ago. Um, so, and he's got more interceptions than he's got touchdowns. So, uh, Marcus Mariota has been off. Um, our defense has stepped up. Our defense, I got to give those guys props. They're playing better than they did a year ago. So, and they've been carrying this team a lot for the most part. Um, the sack numbers isn't there, but they're being more disruptive. They're doing a better job in coverage and what they did last year. Last year and in years past, uh, receivers and tight ends could just run open down the field all day long but this year they're doing a good job of breaking up them passes so um if the titans got a wake-up call in san francisco that is or not san francisco but arizona that is great because next week we got the san francisco 49ers and i expect to win that game but then after that we got two tough games before the playoff start in the la rams and the jacksonville jaguars and if we play like we've been playing against the second and third string houston texans the crippled Indianapolis Colts, the um, Cleveland Browns. If we play like we've been playing against them bad teams, when we play the L.A. Rams and the Jacksonville Jaguars, we're not going to win those games. Yes, we beat the Jacksonville Jaguars at the beginning of the season, but we was playing better back then than what we are now. And it's really tough to kind of talk about what exactly where we got off track and where we went wrong. So um, it's just really up to anyone's guess. Uh, Marcus Mariota back to the quarterback again he kind of seems to be scared in the pocket uh, maybe that broken leg from last season is still lingering in the back of his mind he's rolling out when he should be stepping up in the pocket uh, the only time you don't step up in the pocket is when pressure is coming from the middle but there's pressure coming from the outside and that is when he should step up but instead he's rolling out and uh, he's either gaining a couple of yards on a scramble or throwing the ball away or just running out of bounds for a couple of yard loss so he needs to get his confidence back over the offseason maybe he needs to find him a really good quarterback guru who can really help him and bring that confidence back and um my friend on twitter mo he actually did an article talking about the titans quarterback coach which is jason michaels talking about where he's been, what he's done in his coaching career, what the outcomes has been, and who's he's coached, and where he's at, and all of his experience, which is a very good article. I really enjoyed reading it. It's kind of touched on the lines of what me and Ryan talked about whenever I joined Ryan on Two-Tone Uncensored Podcast. So it kind of uh, went along those lines. Uh, he kind of attacked it at a different angle than what Ryan and I did, but we kind of got to the same outcome. But I'm going to leave that article linked in the description box below, and I'll leave a link to Mo's Twitter as well. 
It is BMO54, BMO54. I'll leave a link to the Twitter as well in the description box. You can check him out and see some of his work that he also does. He's a writer. Maybe one of these days when I figure out how to really uh, get better with technology, I can get him on the channel and we can talk and have a discussion for you guys about the Tennessee Titans. But moving on back to Marcus Mariota, he needs to get somebody uh, over the offseason who can really help and coach him up because really this Titans coaching staff doesn't have a guy to really um, understands quarterbacks. Mike Malarkey has said himself that he doesn't want to mess Marcus Mariota up. He doesn't want him to do anything he's not comfortable doing, which is very great for you because you don't want your franchise quarterback doing that. But at the same time, he also admits that he's never played quarterback at this level in the NFL. So um, he can't really help him too much. He just wants to limit his mistakes. So he really needs some better coaches to move him to that next level, I believe. And speaking of coaches, there is actually a petition going around that is going to be sent for the Tennessee Titans. I didn't make it, but I completely agree with it. Uh, thought, calling for Terry Robisky's job. I think Terry Robisky will finish out the offseason, but I think over the, or to the offseason, but over the offseason, I really, really hope we let him go. Uh, coming news around the league is Terry Robisky, or news coming from the team, is Mike Malarkey has been getting on his butt quite a bit. So hopefully over the offseason he will be gone. But that petition has, um, I haven't looked at it in a couple of days. I think the last time I looked at it, it had right around 11 or 1,200 um, signees on it. I'll leave a link to that petition in the description box below for you to sign as well. It is going to be sent to the Titans organization, which is great. So hopefully us fans can inspire change moving forward. But um, back to the topic at hand, um, back to the coaches that, like we was talking about, while I like Mike Malarkey to a certain extent, uh, I'm not in love with him, but I do like him. I do feel like he has built a good system for our players to kind of play to most of our players' strengths, but he doesn't have the coaches underneath him to really elevate us to that next level because um, the coaches really don't have too much experience. Um, Terry Robisky is a terrible play caller. And I'm not, I'm not going to step on most toes too much, but Jason Michaels isn't all that great of a coach. He hasn't had a lot of success where he's been. Um, Russ Grimm's a great coach. He's probably right under. He's probably my favorite coach on this coaching staff, and I think he should be calling the plays and running the offense. But Dick LeBeau's a great coach. He's really improved our defense and helped our defense out quite a bit since Ray Horton. Um, but um, one thing I would add to what we do is I would add – more plays, and this is too late for it to happen now, but over the offseason, I would add, I would install a pistol formation into our offense because, one, it's something Marcus would be more uh, more uh, comfortable with doing than being always being under center. It gives him a chance to kind of survey the defense and see what's going on on the outsides and around him. That is something that he's more comfortable doing. That's what he spent all of his high school and college career doing. Our running backs are more downhill runners. They like to have a running start before they get the ball in their hands. So out of the pistol, the running back would still get a chance to get a running start before he got the ball in his hands. And um, he would also uh, be um, right there. Marcus would be right there to where he could see the defense and kind of look around. He wouldn't be exactly under center to where the, the helmet kind of covers up his peripheral, peripheral vision. So I think I would install more pistol form formation plays in our offense over the uh, off season, but like I said, moving forward, our team is going to be in trouble if we don't get that wake call. Like I said, we'll we'll probably beat San Francisco. I'm about 75% sure on that. But the LA Rams, that would be a tough game for us to win, even if we was playing up to our potential and playing to our talent level. That would still be a very tough game to win. And Jack, Jack, the, I'm sorry, the Jacksonville Jaguars, we can win that game. We got the talent to beat them, but. The way we're playing right now, we're not going to. We need to get out of this mentality of being lazy and then just winning the games at the very end. Well, we need to get to the mentality of putting our foot on their throat from the very start and just finishing the game, never giving them a chance to come back, hold them down. We need to jump out. We need to get started quicker, and we need to be more consistent throughout the game, which we can do. We are capable of doing. We're just not doing that. A large part of that is play calling. A large part of that is players' confidence. So we just need to fix those two issues, and we can have a pretty decent team, and we're going to need that moving forward because if we don't win this division and the Oakland Raiders finish 9-7, and seven, which we very could likely do if we win the next game and lose the next two, we will be 9-7. and seven. If the Oakland Raiders finish 9-7, and seven, 
They will be a seed ahead of us in the playoffs. If by some miracle the Miami Dolphins finish 9-7, and seven, they would also be ahead of us because they won the tiebreaker games against us. So if both those two teams finish 9-7 and seven, and so do we, we're not going to the playoffs. But if we do, if one does and one doesn't, and um, we'll be, we will be the last seed in the playoffs. So um, that's just something I wanted to throw out there and mention to you guys. But also next season is going to be very, very tough for us if we don't clean up our act, if we don't get better coaches, if our players don't develop and improve to the way that they should and start playing up to their talent level. Because next year, think about this. The Indianapolis Colts will be getting Andrew Luck back, and plus they have more uh, cap space, available cap space for free agents and draft um, and uh, draftees um, than any other team in the NFL next season. So they can take a very, very big step forward next season. The Houston Texans will be getting Deshaun Watson back, J.J. Watt back, Whitney Merciless back. Their team has been crippled with injuries, arguably the most than more than any in the league aside from the New York Giants. So those teams, those two teams, are going to take a very big step forward next season. Jacksonville Jaguars could really could get them a quarterback, whether it be Eli Manning, Tyrod Taylor, um, Kirk Cousins, or trading up in the draft to get somebody. So. The Jacksonville Jaguars could also improve if they go out and get them a quarterback next season. So um, it, we're, in, we're, we're touching on very dangerous grounds here. We're going to have to improve and improve fast because everybody else around us has every opportunity to get better. I know we took a big step forward from going 3-13 and 13 to 9-7, and 7, but we're going to have to improve up on that and not sit back and let them do that. Now, this, would, this is not really a rant video like the last one was where I was really ranting, and it probably would have been if it wasn't for the press conference, Marcus Mariota's press conference. Um, I was pissed after the game was over. I didn't even want to watch it because it's just the same old blah, 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 BS. You know, we win the game. Uh, we're just happy we won. We lose the game. Uh, you know, it sucks, but uh, we know we got to clean up. We'll do better next time. But this one was different. You know, it, I watched it the next day, and that's partially why this video is coming out late to you. Not only do I got to new shift I'm working at work and trying to get adjusted to all of that and working on my scouting videos as well but um, I finally went ahead and I watched the press conference and it was something a little bit different you know it wasn't this ah oh, well we know we got to fix and we'll do better next time it was different you know Marcus was just um, answering questions yes no and then one of the guys asked him um, Marcus you seem a little different in this press conference um, what's different is, is um, uh, what's going on and Basically, Marcus said, I'm pissed, and and um, that just made me feel good because I was finally happy that I am not the only one pissed, that finally, that's what I was looking for, some emotion, and I just wasn't seeing it, but finally, we got to see some emotion, and I know that he cares now, that he wants to do good. It's not just a paycheck for him. It's, um, it's actually, he's taking it personally, and that's what I'm happy to see, um, so I was really happy to see that, and that made me feel a lot better, and that's probably why I'm not screaming and shouting and calling these guys losers and everything else on this video, just completely throwing them on the bus, talking about how they don't want to win. So I was very, very happy to see that, and hopefully uh, this was a wake-up call. It seems like it is, considering Marcus Mariota's press conference, so maybe it was that slap in the face that we needed. We needed to wake up. Playoffs are coming. Uh, I'm not expecting us to win the Super Bowl by no means. Uh, we're still very young and very inexperienced, but I'm expecting us to at least be competitive, not be a team that gets in the playoffs and, and everybody else looks at, uh, looks at us as just an easy win, somebody they can just completely run over, you know, not even really halfway try, put their, take their starters out after halftime. That's not, that's not the go. And to be completely honest with you, I think I would prefer and and um, a pretty loss to someone like the Steelers or the Patriots or just one of those top very good teams to like an ugly win over a crippled Houston Texans or a crippled Indianapolis Colts uh, team because at least I know we're winning ugly against these very bad teams you know how we're, we're it, I would rather be the I would rather be the worst good team than the best bad team is basically what I'm trying to say and originally I didn't plan to edit this video but I wanted to give you guys a few um, a few visuals so that you can see um, some things. So, anyways, guys, that's all I had to do for all I have to say for you today. Be sure to leave a like, hit the subscribe button, help us get up to 200 subs before the 2018 gets here. And um, anything NFL related you want me to talk about, drop it in the comment section below. I will get you featured and shout out on a video. Mock drafts and scouting reports will be coming out 
soon in the future. So have a great day, guys, and thanks for watching.